Sunidhi S. Saranya. She pursued her Bachelor of Engineering in Electronics and Communication Engineering at the JJ College of Engineering and Technology, Trichy. She then went on to pursue her Master of Engineering in Applied Electronics at the Satyabhama University, Chennai. She is currently working as an Associate Professor in Dhanalakshmi Srinivasan College of Engineering and Technology, Chennai. She has published several international and national journalists as well. Her areas of interest include medical electronics, electronic circuits, electronic devices and circuits, mobile communication, digital electronics. Welcome to UGC lecture series, BSc Applied Electronics. In this model, we are going to study the subject of medical electronics contents. Today's lecture, we are going to uh, study about these topics, introduction to biopotential recorders and the characteristics of biopotential recorders, then types of uh, biopotential recorders. Uh, today, we are going to study about uh, only the two types of uh, biopotential recorders. First one will be ECG and then waveform of ECG, what are the lead configurations we are going to study in ECG and then block diagram of ECG and then second topic will be EMG, what are the electrodes that are used in EMG and the recording setup of EMG. Then uh, last topic will be the uh, calculation of conduction velocities in the ECG recorder system. Then we go with the topics, first one introduction of biopotential recorders. Uh, doctors will have successful diagnosis based on the output of the recorder system. Where in 1887, Waller, who had first recorded the ECG system, they have used capillary electrometers. And next, in 1920, uh, the electronic amplifiers are introduced in uh, recording the system. In 1946, they have used ink for recording the biosignals, where, the, where they have used a paper as a recording output system. Then types of uh, biopotential recorders, there are so many types of biopotential recorders. Today we are going to discuss about the two types ECG and EMG. ECG is electrocardiography, EMG is electromyography. Then we can uh, go to the next slide, characteristics of recording system. A basic recording system has these four characteristics, sensitivity, linearity, frequency response and phase response, where with the first sensitivity, it is nothing but the magnitude of the input waveform, what you are getting in the recorder system. Linearity, where in, in it the, pens, uh, the pen deflection will be proportional to the amplitude of the input waveform. Then third one, frequency response, it is used to calculate the frequency components present in the output of the system. And last one will be phase response, it, delay, it, it deals with the time delay between the input and the output of the recording system. Then we go with the recorder systems, first one will be ECG, otherwise it is called as EKG, electrocardiography. It deals with the study of the electrical activity of the heart muscles. The waveforms are picked from different portions of the heart muscles and then it is produced as a ECG wave pattern. Then the rhythmic electric depolarization and repolarization of the heart muscles gives the ECG output. So this is a, a sample example for the heart measuring system ECG. It has three basic components, heartbeat rate, heartbeat rhythm, then heart strength and timing. So these are the three points that are recorded when the patient is placed in the ECG setup. Uh, this is a sample example for the heart's electrical system. So these, it has two types of uh, modes, SA mode and AV mode. First one, SA mode, sinoatrial mode. It is measured from the um, heart muscles, the potential activities near the top artery, right atrium. Second one, AV node, it is, uh, it, uh, the potential ends in the center of the heart. So this is a systematic representation of the normal ECG waveform. So it has different that is different portions, first one P wave, second one R wave, last one T wave. Then the for second one R wave will have a interval series QRS. So the, these waveform is generated because of the patient's recording system with the ECG model. So this is a tabulation that is given in the PPT. So, so first one P wave, P wave is created because of the arterial depolarization. 
So, here are some of the uh, sample amplitude values and duration values. So, the R the P wave can have a amplitude uh, value of 0.25 millivolt and it can be it can be in the duration of 0.12 to 0.22. So, this represents the interval of the waveform. Second one Q R S it is also called as R wave it occurs because of the depolarization of the ventricles and repo repolarization of atrium. The amplitude can be 1.60 and the duration can be 0.07 to 0.1 milliseconds. Then last one T wave it occurs because of the ventricular repolarization the amplitude will be ranging for the T wave it will be from 0.1 to 0.5 millivolt and the uh, duration of the waveform will occur between 0.05 to 0.15. So, this is a tabulation that represents how the ECG waveform is produced in the recording system. So, this is a ECG lead configuration we are having three types of ECG lead configurations. So, before going into the lead configuration types first you, uh, you should know how the signals are picked up from the body. So, you will be using surface electrode it will be paced above the skin surface using a jelly type electrolyte. So, uh, already I have told you three types of uh, electrode systems are available in ECG. First one bipolar limp leads it is otherwise called as standard leads. Second one argumented unipolar limp leads it is also called as unipolar limp leads and then third one is chest leads or unipolar chest leads and then other name of the chest leads it is other name is uh, precardial system, precardial system. So, this diagram represents the lead system, sample lead system, how a lead configuration is recorded from the body of the human. So, uh, definition for this lead uh, ECG lead is the signal recorded as a difference between the potentials on the body surface. So, here the lead, um, lead system that electrode is placed in the human body and the lead measured and it is connected to the differential amplifier after that the output is produced in the oscilloscope. So, we are having uh, 12 lead systems in ECG. So, first 3 will be from the uh, bipolar limp leads, second 3 will be from the argumented unipolar limp leads and third 6 will be from the chest leads. So, totally it is 12 lead ECG system. So, this is a diagram that is that represents the ETO1 calculation. So, using this triangular calculation we are going to go for the measurement of the lead system. So, these are the electrode positions. So, we will be placing the electrodes in the right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg and then last uh, chest we will be placing 6 electrodes in the uh, near the heart above the chest surface. Ok, first one standard bipolar limb plates. In this uh, standard bipolar, bipolar limb plates, so the potentials are tapped from 4 uh, positions, 4 locations of our body right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg. So, this diagram gives a position of the electrode on the body surface. So, already I have told you uh, surface electrodes are used for this measurement. So, here also you will be using the surface electrode that is paced using an electrolyte in the body surfaces. We will be going for the measurement, uh, there are 3 lead measurements, lead 1, lead 2, lead 3. So, before going into the measurement you should know the right leg uh, measurement will be always grounded or it is considered as a reference electrode. So, uh, first we go we can uh, measure the lead 1 system. So, the voltage uh, V 1 is measured. So, the voltage V 1 is between right arm and left arm. So, that is a first lead measurement. Second lead measurement will be from left arm to left leg. So, that is a voltage V 2. Then third lead measurement is between right arm and left leg. So, this is represented as V 3. So, these are the three lead voltages that are measured. Ok, second uh, type of the uh, ECG lead measurement system argumented unipolar limb leads. So, it is otherwise called as unipolar limb leads. So, here also we are having 3 lead measurements first one will be A V R, second one will be A V L, third one will be A V F. So, what is the difference between the previous bipolar and then this unipolar is? 
So, two equal and large resistance will be connected in between the pair of limp electrodes. So, there uh, in, in the previous type you will not use a resistance. So, in argumented unipolar limp plates you will be using large resistance between the two pair of electrodes. So, in argumented uh, unipolar limp plates first measurement will be between voltage argumented voltage right arm that is A V R. Second measurement will be from argumented voltage left arm A V L and the last measurements will be from the argumented voltage foot that is A V F. So, here also the right leg will be considered as a reference electrode. So, the last type of the lead configuration of ECG system is unipolar chest leads. So, here I will be using 6 different electrodes that will be paced in different 6 different positions in the uh, nearer to the heart muscles above the surface of the body. So, it is in the chest position. So, it is given as V1 to V6. So, in this PPT we are having a di that is sample diagram of the position of 6 different electrodes above the body surface. So, what is a major difference between the previous two types and then just chest leads is. So, in unipolar and bipolar we will be measuring the electrical activity will be measured only from the frontal panel. So, in ch unipolar chest leads the electrical activity is uh, measured in a plane perpendicular to the frontal panel. So, this is a um, important difference between this lead configuration system. And next we will go for the ECG recording setup. So, this is a circuit diagram overall block diagram of ECG recording setup. So, here we are having a person in which the lead, uh, lead limbs are connected from the different portions of the body right arm, left arm, right leg, left leg and the chest portion. These all limb plates will be connected to a defibrillator production circuit. So, this defibrillator production circuit will be working on the uh, working on this these connections. Uh, what is the uh, main use of this one is when you are going for the surgery. So, when you are measuring this ECG and the simultaneously we will go for the surgery. So, this defibrillator protection circuit plays an important role. So, the voltage should not uh, go for go beyond the limit of 1000 volt. So, this work is done by this defibrillator protection circuit. Then the measure, measured limb leads are given to the lead selector switch. So, this lead selector switch will have the three types of uh, lead systems. The already we have discussed about this three uh, types of lead systems unipolar, bipolar and then a chest leads. So, these all will be present in the lead selector systems. Let us have a small break. Welcome back. So, before the session we have discussed about the recording setup of ECG. We can continue the remaining part. Lead selector switch. So, there are the three types of lead selector switches. So, these are all available in this uh, switch model. So, it is controlled by the calibration circuit. So, in which the voltage of uh, 1 milli volt should not exceed the process. So, for this purpose we are using this calibration circuit above the lead selector switch. Then the lead selector switch output is given to a bio amplifier. This bio amplifier is a combination of pre amplifier and power amplifier. Then the output of the bio amplifier is given to a output unit. This output unit is a uh, cathode ray oscilloscope. So, where we can display the waveform in which it is also called as a recorder. So, this recorder and bio amplifier is controlled by a external supply. It is a isolated transformer and then isolated power supply and also a power supply it is connected to a output unit. So, this is a total uh, setup of the recording system of ECG. So, uh, one important thing regarding this lead selector switch is when you go with the change in the lead selector configuration. So, there will be uh, there will be a dramatic change in the uh, output of the recorders. So, it is called as a attic after. So, already I have discussed about the three types. So, when you change from one type to another type, bipolar to uni unipolar, then it will be a 
uh, trace change in the recorder system. So, this is a recording setup of ECG, then there will uh, some of the principles are given for the recording setup. So, how the calculation is done in the ECG recording setup? So, already the bioamplifier will have a combination of preamplifier and power amplifier. So, that power amplifier calculates the output of the ECG recording setup. So, P out, so power output is equal to V out square divided by RL. This is one equation. Other one, if you use to calculate the efficiency of the ECG recording setup, so this is a formula P out divided by P out plus P loss. So, loss of power and then output power. So, the total output uh, system that is output unit of ECG will have a cathode ray oscilloscope or a paper chart recorder. So, any one can be used as a output unit. So, then we go with the next recording setup EMG electromyography. So, this measures the electrical activity of the muscles action potential. So, when you measure, when you measure the electrical activity of a uh, peripheral nervous nervous system, it is called as electroneurography. So, the surface uh, in this uh, EMG, the surface electrode is used to measure the electrical activity of the underlying muscles. So, you already know the surface electrode are placed above the skin surface using a electrolyte and then uh, that electrode is supported by a elastic band. So, we can also use needle electrode. So, when you use needle electrode for EMG measurement, you have to insert the needle electrode inside the nerves muscle. So, then if you go for the measurement, there is a possibility of measurement of positive as well as negative potentials in from the pair of electrodes. Hence, it can be added or cancelled out. So, when you, when you measure for the, when you, when you measure the electric potentials, uh, before that we have to give the stimulating uh, potential to the nerve system. So, because of this, there will be a contraction in the muscles occurs, then we can measure the electrical activity using the EMG electrode. So, these are uh, the electrode is uh, already I have told you the surface electrode is used in for the measurement. For example, for the surface electrode is AG, AGCL, silver and silver chloride. So, the shape of the surface electrode will be a disc shape. Then types of electrode will be having two types of electrodes in the EM, EMG measurements. One will be the bipolar electrodes, other one will be the unipolar electrodes. So, the bipolar electrodes example is the surface electrode. So, the potential difference between the two surface electrodes on the resting of the skin. So, it is called as, it is a definition for bipolar electrodes. Uh, the surface electrode is placed uh, above, the, um, above the skin surface. Hence, so it will give the potential activity of a given muscle or a group of muscle. So, we cannot measure the uh, electrical activity of an individual, individual nerve fiber using this bipotential electrode. So, the bipotential electrode that is the surface electrode have a large contact area, hence the uh, contact impedance will be larger compared to the needle electrode. It will be equal to 100 ohms. So, unipolar electrodes and the second type of the EMG measurement, uh, the reference electrode will be the surface electrode where it is placed above the skin surface and the needle electrode will be, uh, will be having a active electrode, it is placed inside the nerve muscle. So, the EM that is uh, this needle electrode has a uh, potential measurement of a individual nerve or a muscle. There is a contact area of the needle muscle will be smaller, hence, uh, hence it will be having high impedance. The signal ranging of the uh, needle electrode will be from 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 millivolt and the frequency range is between 20 to 200 hertz. The next uh, topic that is a EMG recording setup. So, this EMG recording setup will have a EMG amplifier used to pick the input signal from the body surface and it is displayed in the oscilloscope tape recorder and then it is also displayed using the loudspeaker. So, the EMG recording setup is simple compared to the ECG recording setup. So, here we will be using two CRT that is cathode ray tube. So, one will be using for the viewing purpose, another one will be used for the recording purpose. Uh, so, a light sensitive paper will be moving over CRT and the image is produced on the paper. So, the paper speed will be comparatively from uh, 5 to 25 centimeter per second 
and the output paper that is paper width will be 10 centimeter. So, already I have told you there will be three types of uh, output displays. So, the tape recorder is uh, the output of and that is output display tape recorder was one of the displays. So, it is used for the future reference. So, this uh, EMG can also uh, can also display in the form of loudspeaker. So, the EMG is very useful in, uh, useful in studying of the neuromuscular function and diagnosing the muscular diseases. So, next one. So, the important uh, term that is related with the EMG measurement is latency and then conduction velocities. So, this uh, definition for latency is it is, it is defined as the elapsed time between the stimulating impulse and the muscle's action potential. So, this conduction velocity and latency is interrelated with measuring of the EMG electrode. When an electric uh, shock is applied to the nerve, so automatically a stimulation is occurred in the nerve system. So, it results to the contraction of the muscles. So, when, when the contraction of muscle occurs, automatically we will get the stimulating pulse from the using the EMG electrode. So, the pulse duration will be from 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 milliseconds. So, during using uh, in between this duration, the waveform is measured using the EMG electrode. So, next one, determination of the conduction velocity in the motor nerves. So, um, the, uh, the contraction of the muscle produces the stimulating pulse. So, the normal resting muscle cannot produce any stimulating pulses or action potentials. So, this uh, conduction velocity is measured while there is a contraction in the muscle nerves. So, that means uh, action potential is given as a output. So, when you apply the electric pulse in the stimulate, so is in the uh, nerve system using a stimulating electrode, automatically nerves contraction is uh, created. So, first we will be having two types of measurement, uh, two electrodes are used for the measurement. First type the electrode will be uh, will be separated with a distance of uh, a known distance. Then second type the distance will be decreased compared to the first one. Okay, first one when you place the uh, when you place the EMG and then a stimulating electrode at a point on the skin surface separated by a known distance. So, the diagram shows the uh, uh, distance between the two electrodes and how the stimulating pulse are measured from the EMG electrode and it is recorded. So, the second uh, measurement that is distance of uh, between the electrodes are decreased and then the electrode uh, portions are interchanged. So, the comparatively uh, it is L2 distance is smaller compared to L1, L1 distance. So, this uh, lapsed time T1 is between the stimulating impulse and the muscles action potential and how it is measured it is shown in the diagram. When you apply the stimulating pulse to the nerves, so automatically it produces the action potential and it is recorded in the EMG system and it is displays, displayed in the oscilloscope. So, the, con the formula used to calculate the conduction velocity will be L1 minus L2 divided by T1 minus T2. So, this T1 and T2 are the lapsed time intervals. So, the conduction velocity of a normal peripheral nerve system will be 50 mil, uh, meter per second. So, when it is decreases below 40 meter per second, so there will be some disorders in the nerves conduction system. So, it, it can be diagnosed using the output of the recorder system. So, uh, this, this is a summary of the whole session. So, in this session we have discussed about the potential biopotential recorders and how it is uh, the characteristics of the biopotential recorders, the recording setup that is two types of recording setups ECG, EMG and then uh, in ECG electrocardiography we have uh, discussed about the uh, lead uh, configurations, three types of lead configurations and then a recording setup. So, the total uh, block diagram of the ECG recording setup, then uh, EMG measurements. In EMG measurements, we have discussed about the electrodes used in measurement and then uh, last uh, we have discussed about the calculation of the conduction velocity in the EMG recorder. So, using the latency calculation. Here, some of the questions available to check your uh, memory. 
So first uh, discuss about the different characteristics of the recording system. Then uh, second question with a neat block diagram explain the ECG recording setup and then output unit. And third what are the types of lead configuration available in the ECG recording setup. Then uh, the recording setup of EMG and what are the electrodes used for the recording setup, recording of EMG uh, wave. And then uh, last question, how the latency and the conduction velocities are calculated in the EMG measurement using the peripheral nerve system. Thank you.